My name is Jerry Kohut. I'm the community liaison for Cathedral Village. And basically what I do is provide programs uh, at Cathedral Village, but also for seniors in the general area. I love doing it. I've been doing it for about five years. And I always are switching topics out. But um, socialization and mental health programs have been the most popular. Why? Mental health. Well, you see what's happening in our, in our country and in our world. It is a mental health problem. And as a result of the mental health problem, people are not socializing like we used to. People are afraid. People are afraid of the COVID. They're afraid of so many things. Nothing is really settled right now. So you feel that stress. But the biggest thing you can do is to socialize with people to get comfort in knowing. I can pick up the phone, call Mary, because Mary will help me. I can text somebody or write a letter. The things that are so important uh, during this very challenging time. So I do think socialization is your best vitamin. Loneliness. Loneliness is a risk factor for early death beyond what can be explained by poor health. Feeling lonely is unhappy, and it is unsafe. Loneliness has a tendency to be contagious. Further issue, people who know a person who is lonely may avoid connecting, as this may be depressing for that person. The result is more isolation for both individuals. So loneliness is a real factor, and it does affect how we feel about our daily lives. The importance of socialization. Well, human nature leads us to crave fulfilling relationships with other people. This is standard in most people. So just like I met Dave this morning and he helped me out. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm going to thank Dave and I'll remember his kindness. We need encouragement to prioritize making our social lives top on our daily to-do list. The people we share life with should be a significant part of our daily living. Some people are happy to be alone, but most thrive and enjoy support and rapport with others. And you probably all know that person, that loner, doesn't connect with people, is healthy, seems content, but he does not socialize. And there are many people like that. And that's okay, that's their world. Aging in our society. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 12 million people live alone. Additionally, many seniors do not have children or children who live far away. Fewer family members are available to help and or support an older adult. Social contacts tend to decrease as we age. Reasons for the isolation may be retirement, death of a spouse or partner, living accommodations. Perceived isolation is feeling that you are lonely. So years ago, uh, families sort of stayed together. And you might have lived in, a, in Delaware County, and that was your house growing up. Then one person gets married, and they sort of lived in Delaware County, because that's where they grew up, and on and on and on. Today, that doesn't happen most often happens because of job responsibilities, where you can get that job. Um, and you find the great job, and it could be for living in Pennsylvania, and it's in Arkansas, a world away from Pennsylvania, and a world away from what we expect as Pennsylvanians if you live in a state that is, you're not familiar with. So I think it really is such an issue, and I think so much of what we do really goes on what our headset, what our mindset is all about. We, who can provide social support? Well, first thought is the family, but that is often not possible. We already talked about that. I remember um, when we, our family lived in Philadelphia, and we moved when I was, oh, in like first grade or second grade, so it was many years ago. And I remember when we moved to Delaware County, Lansdowne, Pennsylvania, to be exactly where we moved to, 
It was the country. We had friends from Philadelphia coming on a weekend just to see all the trees and wonderful experiences to live in that type of a situation. Uh, but again, it's not where everybody is. The need for community-based services has become critical. The key to any program must promote positive self-awareness. So you can go to a program that you see listed and you have to be part of that program. If you're not, it's kind of a waste. You have to look up everything that you're going to do to make you feel good. Senior center, centers and adult day programs satisfy a particular need for seniors. Senior centers provide reminiscent groups, journal writing, meals, group exercise, reading group, with input in the planning. I just want to go back to the one area of the senior centers. We'll talk about senior centers and adult day programs later because they are so significant for seniors that don't have people living around them. Senior isolation increases the risk of mortality. Social isolation and loneliness are associated with higher death rates. People who live alone are also at an increased risk of death as there is less of a network to prompt medical attention. Those people living alone, they live alone by choice or by condition, whatever they, wherever they want to live. But the issue is they live alone and if they're not feeling well, or really feel lousy and they don't tend to it, then they have no support to say, you know, uh, Mary, you better get to the doctor's office or the emergency room, something's happening to you. Older adults may no longer be able to drive. Local transportation is so inadequate or unsafe. 50% of seniors report that this is a huge issue. So we have the transportation. We have it, we see trains, buses, but people, first of all, don't feel it's as safe as it used to be. Every night, Philadelphia News, sorry to say, it's always talking about SEPTA this and this. It's just really a challenge now. And that's what I'm saying. This couple of years has been a challenge for all. I do uh, something on stress management because people are really saying, you know, I don't feel like I can cope anymore. Every time you turn the TV on, it's more deaths in Philadelphia. Uh, children are dying. So all of these things are affecting our being. Health outcomes of feeling lonely or isolated. So remember, if it's you're living alone and you are isolated because you don't have those social connections, they have a less restful sleep, higher blood pressure, increased level of unhealthy stress hormone, cortisol, increased rates of depression, decreased sense of living a meaningful life. People underestimate the importance of sharing good times with friends and family. And we talked early on, we talked about there are, there, that family connection doesn't exist as it used to. So we're saying, I'm saying that they do feel more isolated. You know, Sunday dinners used to always happen in a lot of places, not lots of families. Everybody come for Sunday dinner. It was like a ritual. Those Sunday dinners don't exist anymore. Why? Well, Janie's in New Jersey, or there were other ones in Arkansas. They don't have those Sunday dinners, dinners. So that at that time, you can really express your concerns to a family member. You can always pick up the phone, but that face-to-face -face is so important. Improved mental health. Many aging adults are at risk of being isolated which can lead to depression, isolation, and loneliness. This can elicit feelings of despair and worthlessness. So we look at this as being aging adults, they feel isolated, they live alone, and they don't have the ease of connectivity. People we interact with and activities we do together demonstrates our own self-worth. So let's say you, you joined an art class and you really were not an artist, but you wanted to try it. So you join that art class and the teacher says, this is beginning art, don't worry how your first piece looks. Well, some of them look pretty bad, but guess what? She said, guess what? Your next piece is going to be a Picasso. 
So you go, go to these um, uh, programs to make yourself feel good. You've accomplished something. Time spent with others keeps a healthy mental state and a more positive attitude in day-to-day -day living. So even this group, well, it's really hard with these masks on, <laughs> but even this group, you're looking around, you're seeing people, and at the end, I'm gonna have you introduce yourself so that you can, oh yeah, I remember, um, she came to the last program that we attended because we have to social distance. Before, we were all around this little table, the table's in the back, and we could say hi, and hi, oh, I saw you last time you were here. So it has affected every avenue of our lives. Sense of belonging. Feeling like we belong somewhere is just as important in our senior years as it was during adolescence. Will you remember in high school where you ate at the lunch table? That was significant because you didn't want to eat alone. <laughs> so you grabbed a group of people that you seemed to think you were going to like and you plopped your tray down and you ate. What's the same thing in our senior years? We want to feel like we belong and we want to feel like we belong with like people. So it sort of connects uh, in your early years and then in our senior years. It's always the same, things don't change. It is important to know that we have people to whom we can turn to, to share our ups and our downs of life. Especially those who are going through the loss of a spouse or close friend. Socializing with other people can also help to cultivate new friendships and lasting bonds. So these are things you know. You know, if you have a friend and that friend calls you in the morning and you go through your daily routine of what's happening, it makes you feel good. Now you go on. Or you're going to meet somebody for lunch. You know, you live alone and you're in an apartment or a house and you're really happy to sort of get out of the house and to meet your friend that you really enjoy. It does give you that sense of belonging. Increased self-esteem. As we age, our self-esteem can dwindle as we experience the difficulties of aging. You know, aging is great. Well, first of all, aging is great because we're alive, right? <laughs> but also, the, there are things that happen to us as we age. We no longer may be able to drive, shop, visit, travel, the things that were like second nature to you. Perhaps you sold your car. Well, I don't want to talk about car problems right now, but anyway, I can relate this morning. But anyway, let's say um, you can't drive, or you don't feel comfortable driving, or you just drive locally. Before, you'd be on that turnpike visiting friends and family, but driving becomes an issue. Um, shopping, well, the pandemic, a good thing of the pandemic now is you can order and food, uh, your products are delivered, which is a good thing for some people, but it also isolates you more. So is it good or is it bad? But this pandemic has really created some issues that will linger. Your world may feel as though it has changed and frustration comes into place. It is a fight for your current situation. Giving in is not the answer. Spending quality time with those we care about reminds us that life is worth living. So uh, through this whole program, I'm gonna say we are in control of our socialization. We are in control of our lives, how we want to live them. So as you start thinking, we can do it. Improve physical and mental health. Well, spending time positively engaged with other people raises self-esteem. We talked about self-esteem being so important. So does spending time. It engages us and you feel better. Keeping up with current news and trends. Well, I don't know about you, but there is something that says, do not watch news all day. Some, well, I do when I'm cleaning. Unfortunately, I turn the news on. It's just noise. <laughs> I could turn, uh, we have beautiful sound, beautiful music and songs, etc., etc. but I have the news on. So all of a sudden you're thinking, I live in this terrible world because that's all you hear on the news. And when you start, let's say 7 a.m., that travels all through the day, 12 noon. There's 24-7, uh, they're saying the same thing. So all of a sudden, your brain is saying, 
oh, this is a bad place to live. Do you have a choice? Well, you do have choices. But again, um, current news and trends, just watch how much time uh, you do listen to them. And I'm not saying you should, but when you channel, you'll, you'll hear the news presented in so many different ways. Again, it's just another issue. Anything that boosts self-esteem and self-confidence can contribute to a positive mental outlook. And that's what we all want. As an example, going to the hairdresser or barber, nail salon or getting a massage, you know, cheat yourself sometimes. It's a good thing, you know, some of you, oh, I don't want to do that, or a massage, I've never had a massage. Well, they are really nice. I've had two in my life, they are nice. And I'm thinking about going uh, back, there's a person around where we live that really supposedly is good. Uh, walk, walking or exercises with a friend. That's really a great thing, because one, you have somebody else to walk with, but that conversation goes on and on. I, when we lived in Allentown, there was a great place to walk, and I'd always meet a friend, and she would say, if I'm, we'll meet at the corner, we don't have to call each other, because you know how that goes, we'll meet at the corner, if I'm not there, or if, you know, like at a certain time, the other person just walks, so that we're not, you know, and generally we're always there on time and together, but that was so great, because we walked, we exercised, by the time we got back, we said, we walked 45 minutes, why? Because we were chatting about the, lo the, the day's activity, something that happened to somebody, something that happened to one of our children. It's a wonderful thing if you can find that person that you like to walk with. And I asked my friend, Mary, if she continued walking. She said, no, there's nobody to talk to. That's the only reason I walk. And that is so true. The need to grow your social group. I think this is huge. Remaining engaged and active with other people. Join groups or clubs in your community or online. Well, the pandemic has thwarted all of that. You know, we just can't join a group or a club. Most of them are not even available because of the pandemic. But that is, again, one of the things that are really good. And I really appreciate Mary Angelo because she's starting in in-person programs and there's nothing like it to, you know, I've been zoom so Zoomed to death <laughs> because all of my programs have been on Zoom. And you need to see the people, you need to see a person's reaction to what I'm saying, but um, a few are now coming back, so that's a good thing. Social groups that you enjoy offers meaning in your life. How, have, you, have a new neighbor? Welcome that person. Make that person feel like, oh, this is so nice. Um, I just met my neighbor from two houses down she came, we talked. I didn't invite her in because she just wanted to say hello. Here's my telephone number if you need anything. I know when you're moving into a new place, it's hard to get accustomed to it. But just that little welcome uh, knock on the door makes a person really feel good. And then later you might you know, really connect, but it doesn't matter. She, you know where she is, and she also gave you her telephone number. Especially when you're moving into a new place. You don't know anything about anything. And you know, the realtor will say, I remember, no, not that this is appropriate, but when we first moved in 10 years ago to Philadelphia area, so silly me, I asked the realtor, you know, well, what's a close church? And so she told me, oh, well, thank you. So we went to that close church. We, after a while, you're in the church, you don't think anything about it. Well, here, there was some, Thing that I wanted to go to a church and I realized there was a church I went churches near me we are four blocks from that church <laughs> I know it sounds silly that I didn't figure this out myself never saw it it was all you have to do is turn right at McDonald's and you're right there so I use that as a very poor example but things happen you know you ask people you think that you never lived there before so just keep that in mind too I just said, if you are a member of a faith-based program, engage in their activities. You know, there, there are just so many things that you can get involved in. Not that you have to, but just remember, you're around people. And I think that really means a lot. Dining with others. Dining with friends offers an occasion catching up and checking in. Dining is celebrated so often at senior centers when they're open, health clubs, meal programs, 
and at, a lo at a local restaurants. You know, there's senior day and it's discounted. Everybody comes out. <laughs> I always say, enjoy a potluck dinner. Everyone in your group contributes, uh, contributes and all look forward to the event. I think dining with others is such an easy way. And you say, say you're breaking bread with a friend. And as we also say, we all, we all have to eat. Promote sense of purpose. Many hobbies and interests are social in nature. Playing bridge, card games, or board games. You're meeting with somebody, but there's a reason for you to meet with somebody. Maybe sometimes you need that. Planned events at senior centers or social clubs. Volunteering is wonderful. You give, but you receive so much in return. I know there's a lot to say about volunteering, and volunteers are so needed in so many areas, especially now. But again, then you have to say, well, I, I don't know that, that group that I want to volunteer with. Then you're putting yourself, again, during the pandemic in people that you're not sure of. So you have to, you just can't easily say, I'm going to volunteer with this group. You really have to um, get into that. But volunteering is wonderful. You're, you're giving, but you're getting so much more in return. And there are so many places to volunteer, depending on your interests. You can volunteer near me, and everything that comes up on the website, you look at it, you, well, that's for me, that's not for me, but then you investigate. I never say, look at the internet and say, oh, I'm gonna go there without really investigating anything. Taking <laughs> a breather with this one. Okay, transportation is a huge factor. Share a ride with a friend or a family member to assist. Transportation is so big. First of all, people don't like public transportation. It used to be not on time, um, not clean, not safe. That's what you hear on television. What happened on SEPTA? What happened here? So transportation is a huge problem, um, especially public transportation. The fees are, 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 are high. You know, it used to be, I think, 35 cents a bus to somewhere. Well, now it's two to three dollars. I don't know how people really afford it. That have to take that transportation on a daily basis for work. Care for a pet, your great companions. I had a little dog, Sassy. Uh, it was for our son. I had never had a dog before. So, well, we looked at other things. He liked the bulldog look. And so the first place we went, a breeder, it was like this huge bulldog. <laughs> and I've never had a dog and his, his teeth were just, you know what I'm talking about, just right there. And I decided we didn't want that. So uh, we looked several places and we got a pug. Now a pug is some kind of a bulldog and it was the best thing for him, my son, our son, but also I really became familiar and I love Sassy to death. She uh, lived about 14 years, and, uh, but it was, she was a great companion. And I never thought I'd have a dog in my life, nor that I love so much. Now here we go, health benefits of volunteering. Um, recent studies have demonstrated that volunteering might be the fountain of youth for, for seniors. Volunteers experience fewer limitations in their physical abilities, slower decline in health because of aging, reduced risk of depression, increase in physical activity, greater engagement in the local community, large number of friends and associates, and their optimis optimism about their health. So volunteering is wonderful. Pick something you really like to get involved with. But again, as I said previously, you volunteer to give, but you get so much in return. These are some of the things that you should look for in volunteering. Encourage exercise. Exercise and moving our bodies releases endorphins, which reduce stress and just makes us feel better. I know sitting and sitting all day is not good, but just a little bit of exercise. It will get your blood moving, increase your flexibility and strength. This may also offer a positive body image and more comfortable to interact with peers. And I say that because older adults who do not have a po positive body image may isolate themselves. If they're overweight or their clothes don't fit, they don't wanna go out and do an exercise program. 
I know um, so many of the places and so many of the insurance carriers now do cover for older adults um, your exercise program. And it is so wonderful to do that. And you know, again, if you go to a place, I go to LA Fitness and our insurance covers it. I go there because there are people around. <laughs> you know, they're, they're exercising. I use the, the bike and I use the treadmill, but you see people. And you know, that's something that you don't have to rely if you go to a club on a friend or associate. Keep up doctor visits. Prevent, preventative health is key and being aware of an issue and sharing with practitioners is so important. Examples may be hearing or vision problems. You know, all of a sudden you could say, I, uh, you turn the TV up a little bit louder, a little bit louder. Somebody walks in the room and says, oh my gosh, what's wrong? Oh, you say, you avoid the question and you say, oh, I don't know, I was just playing with the, with the, uh, my, the remote. You could, you could lower it, but it's something that people do not want to admit to. And hearing and vision problems can really impact a person's well-being and guess what? How they communicate with people. Incontinence can be treated or managed, but the problem needs to be addressed. Incontinence can interfere with even wanting to leave home. Medication can be given or purchasing of incontinent supplies provides a living life without embarrassment or fear of being in public. So these are kinds of things that keep seniors isolated. They don't want to um, go out if they can't hear or see properly. And a lot of people just say, I'm, I'm fine. I don't want to go to the doctors. I could hear, I could see, but things happen. Health benefits of random acts of kindness. I love this. Practicing kindness is beneficial for both the giver and the receiver. I will remember Dave, person that picked me up. He did a random act of kindness. Um, he did. So anyway, it's good for both. Um, all of a sudden, it becomes a way of life. And I think Dave is that kind of a person that would help anyone. May increase self-esteem. You feel good about yourself. Well, I did something for somebody. Studies have shown even witnessing a random act of kindness or altruistic behavior can have a positive impact on your immune response, an occurrence known as the Mother Teresa effect. Isn't that, I mean, they've named, they've named an act of kindness. It's just that little thing that you can do, and it is called the Mother Teresa effect. I thought that was really very interesting. Community-based services. Senior, senior centers continue to offer services daily or as desired. In the United States, there are over 15,000 centers, and some of the centers are huge. They can have 10 people, 20, 100 people. There is a senior center in Roxburgh, and since the pandemic, certainly it has not been open. <clears throat> they also provide lunch. And one time I went there, or I went there a couple of times to do a presentation. One was at Halloween, there were about 100 people there. All, oh, you know, it's like for over 60, I will say 70, 80, they were in this gal, these gala outfits, happy as larks, sharing, laughing. I thought, now isn't that perfect? Where would they be if they didn't attend this senior center? Sitting at home, maybe not doing too much. Uh, health and wellness programs are throughout. Oops. Here we go. Community-based services, uh, health and wellness programs, transportation being offered for more people, uh, intergenerational programs are available, and many of these sites I already mentioned have, provides nutritious meals and snacks. But what do they really do when you go to a senior center? They are developing lasting friendships. You sit with people that you're eating with, you sit with people if you're playing cards, and it's an easy way to interact. Adult day centers. There are more than 6,000 adult day centers nationwide. The first adult day center in Pennsylvania opened in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Well, I have a little asterisk there because um, when I was the executive director at Westminster Village in Allentown, uh, the admissions director said to me, you know what, I am getting so many people 
that want to move in, want to move their mother or father in to our community. The mother doesn't want to go, the father doesn't want to go. And they're really well, but they don't want to go to a site like this, you know, the Continuum Care Retirement Community. We provide independent living, uh, skilled nursing services, memory support, and health care. They didn't want a thing about it. That's not me. But adult day centers, you can go anytime you want to. They are available at different times of the day. You can go one day or you can go five days or six days a week. Um, but that first one, I will remember it like it was yesterday. We started one in, a, I was at Westminster Village in Allentown, and there was a little strip mall near um, our community. And they had a sign up for rent, and it was like two big uh, complex, two big rooms uh, and two bathrooms. And it looked really tacky, and so we went, we looked around, and we said, look, it's near Westminster Village Alley. We could monitor it. Why don't we just start renting it and see what happens? So my boss said, okay, let's do it. So we rented it, two rooms, two bathrooms. Well, actually, what did we have to do? We had to furnish it. We had to provide refrigerators and uh, microwave and all of that because we wanted it to be like home. We did everything. We dressed it up. It looked fabulous the day people were walking in. And we had to start marketing it. So we did. We marketed it. So I think the first day we had five participants. So we're standing there thinking, oh, are they really going to come <laughs> And they came with a family member. The family member, five of them, almost cried to see that their mother, instead of sitting home alone, watching the boob tube, they were going to socialize. And they were amazed that they could do this. So obviously, it took off. We, from those two rooms, we enlarged it, it became a place, a gathering place, and um, what we opened it at 7 a.m. for people that work and want to drop off till 7 p.m. for people that work and want to pick up. So we provided, as we progressed, three meals a day, all kinds of activities and programs. It was such a success. So I would say one of my successes was having the admissions director recognize the need. We satisfied that need and everybody was so happy. And the one that I remember so vividly, uh, it was a wife telling, sharing information about her husband. He was just sitting home alone. He had some health issues, but he could walk, and he, but he just didn't want to do anything. Just did not want to, nothing. So she said, you're gonna try this just a week. You don't have to stay more than a week, but just try it. He blossomed, he blossomed. So she said, P that's the whole thing. People need people. And that's the whole uh, line that I'm saying throughout the program. Assuring your connections. Okay, so we've talked about socialization, but how do you reach them? Identify active social contacts with addresses and phone numbers. Some people have, you know, a phone number in one pocket, something here, and you know, you have to put them all in one. For the longest time when we moved to uh, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, I had four address books because I didn't want to, you know, purge them like for birthday cards or, and the one uh, address book, my mother answered the phone for something. She couldn't find paper. She was, you know, just visiting us. So I wasn't home. And so she wrote the note in the, my address book. Could I throw that away <laughs> because my mother wrote me a note? Things reminiscent are things that would affect me but not affect you. So keep accurate books. Check your communication equipment. Does your cell phone work? Can you do FaceTime or Skype? Assure local health care options, physician hours, COVID-19 restrictions. So you are your own keeper. You have to know what your doctor's office requires. You have to know how, you know, what responsibilities they have with social distancing, and um, so many other things. And the biggest thing that occurred during the COVID-19 pandemic was uh, telemedicine. How many have had to use telemedicine to reach your doctor? That's it. 
three, four. Yeah, that's the way to go. I mean, that's the doctors love it, the nurses love it in the practice, because sometimes you just have, first of all, you may just need to report results and the doctor explain, okay, this is your blood work, this is what I want you to do. Before, you had to go to the office. And they're not gonna tell you the same thing over the phone, so telemedicine is wonderful for that. It's also so wonderful for post-op visits. You know, you had an operation and uh, one week they have to check you, maybe they check you one week. But after that, they would also wanna check you and keep you for six weeks. Now you go on telemedicine and realize that the doctor can see me. If you have any questions or concerns, they are right there. It is just wonderful. Um, I dial down bad news. We already talked about this. Listening to or watching today's news updates, okay, but not 24 hour updates. And that's what you get, 24 hour updates. Satisfying options, face to face interactions. Telephone calls are wonderful. If you can't see that person, and especially during COVID, give that person a telephone call. Letter writing is a thing of the past. First of all, the rate of postage. <laughs> you know, that's cheap. That's, that's something to consider. Let, but letter writing makes you um, talk to the other person about some of your activities and days. You're thinking about it, um, things that are going to happen. The person that receives the letter, going to the mailbox and getting a letter, is really kind of uplifting. So it might be a little old fashioned, but I think it's wonderful. And I have these little note cards and I send them out just every once in a while to a friend that's, I have friends in Tennessee, and I'll just say, just thinking of you, how are you and your family? Best wishes, love, Jerry. Makes me feel good, and when she receives it, it's not a big note, it's just a little, a few lines. A lot of people do journal writing and reading a great book and sharing that great book. I think book clubs are wonderful. A lot of book clubs are, are Zoom, and that's a good thing because again, you're talking to people, you're seeing people. Uh, I would just say, are there any questions? I have handouts. Yes. Um, now my mother has passed a number of, for a number of years ago, mm -hmm. but she was in a number of senior homes. And maybe this has changed, although I can think of two retirement communities where this still exists. Mm -hmm. That as the new person, there are clicks, and it's hard to yes. break into, especially if you're, and my mother was outgoing, but you know, I remember she one time was hostess at a group, and a new person came in, and the people, there was an empty chair, mm -hmm. the people at the end of the table said, oh no, you can't stay here because so-and-so always sits here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's, my mother found this lady in the bathroom later on crying. Yeah. Because and I know that this is, was not an isolated incident. There's uh -huh. some, I, I can think of um, a senior center that my mother went to, but I can also, and uh, this is years ago, but I also know of two retirement communities mm -hmm. where the it's a clip. of mine have said it's yeah. really hard to. Yeah, yeah. Well, everybody treats newcomers differently. And unfortunately, they are a newcomer, and that's why they have to be treated with such dignity and respect, number one, because they chose to move in. We'll start with that. Um, but it is, it is. And I always say when that happens, and I know people don't do this, but like to kind of comment to like the person that moved your mom in, because they need to know how the person is feeling. As a matter of fact, I belong to like about four or five high school friends, and we meet for lunch every once in a while. And one of the gals said she went to a retirement community for a friend, and she was sort of scoping it out. And she said she also was not treated well at this community. And I said, you really have to let them know. And especially, they didn't move in there, so therefore you don't have that fear of well, reprisal. But it does happen. And I will have a very brief story, but there was a, a resident in New York City who wanted to, well, her children wanted her to come from New York City to where they live in Atlanta. They, they used to be able to go back and forth when the kids were young, but now, no way, because now teenagers and they just wanted to do their own thing. 
So they moved, the mother reluctantly moved to the Atlanta area, moved there. And she absolutely, positively did not want to do this, but because of her daughter. So the first day, first three or four days, she was miserable. And they, had, they only had served the one meal, the dinner meal at that point. So um, somebody, one of the girls said, why don't we try to encourage, that's, her name was Estella, I think, to come in and eat with us because she looked so unhappy at the, t the table that she was assigned. And you can move, but anyway, she looked unhappy. So they asked her to go, and she didn't want to go because she thought, it's going to be the same way. So anyway, they sat down. And this one woman said, you know, tell us a little bit about you. We know you're new. And she said, well, I'm only here because of my daughter. And that story started. And they said, well, what did you do when you were in New York City? Well, she said, the one thing I did when I lived in my little apartment, I exercised yoga every day. Every day, that was my life. That's what got me going in the morning. And they said, well, why can't you do it here? Well, there's no place to go. And there's no body to do it with. So now this little group took charge, went to the administrator. This is why she's so unhappy. And they said, well, why didn't, why didn't she tell us that? We would have tried to help her. Long story short, they said, there is a exercise room. Nobody uses it. It's mirrors all the way around. You know, these things are wonderful, but nobody uses it. Go to, go there and you can do yoga. Well, what time do you like to do it? Seven o'clock in the morning. She said, I will have the maintenance fella open it at seven o'clock in the morning. You can use, you could stay there all day. So she went the first day. Oh my God, she felt alive. So then she goes the second day, alive. So then one of her table mates said, well, are you still liking it? I love it, it has changed my day. So then this one table mate said, can you teach me? Well, I, I really don't teach, but sure, come along. Then the entire table now goes to this yoga group. Well, sh they were so happy. So then they said, why don't you teach yoga for the residents? So she taught yoga for the residents. Well, then there was a little write-up in the Atlanta News about this 85-year-old person teaching yoga at a continuing care retirement community. Well, New York City picked that up. And said, There's an 85-year-old woman that does yoga. Let's have her up. She it was on the Today Show. So here is this little lady that loves to do her yoga, not bothering a soul. <laughs> Matt Lauer, this is how many years ago, invited her up. So she, her daughter, and two of the other residents that did it with her stayed in this posh restaurant, had a wonderful meal in New York City. Matt Lauer interviewed her, and she, he said, okay, now we know what you do. We know how motivated you are. Do some yoga on the stage. And she said, I will, but you have to do it too. Well, Matt Lauer, I know, was like, couldn't even touch his toes. And everybody was laughing. And here she made um, you know, something that was so just about her, it opened up the world. And it was, she got news coverage, and she didn't want anything. All she wanted to do was just do her little yoga class. But it just demonstrates when you're true to yourself and you like something that you do, anything is possible. So she made, I mean, her family couldn't believe it because she didn't want to go there. And all of a sudden, she was on Matt Lauer's show, and she looked great for 85, too. She could do anything. So we can leave that to say you can do anything. But if you aren't happy, just let somebody know. And it's easy to say that, but when you always feel like, oh, they're going to reprisal or something, or not be as kind. And that's not true. They want people to be happy there. Because if your person is happy, you're going to tell Joe Schmo, you're going to tell this one. My mother loves this facility. So they would ra rather hear bad news than no news. Any other questions or comments? So thank you all for coming. I am so glad that I got here. That was my <laughs>